Ahoy there sailors. Welcome back to Mr. Childers Boathouse. It's Coach Chris here. You know, it's a really nice day outside and I've been cooped up for a little while. I think I'm gonna go for a walk through the park. Did you wanna come with me? You know, I think there's a little bit of breeze outside. I was looking at the trees and I think it'd be fun if we could learn a little bit about it. Maybe learn about where the wind comes from and how it's affected by stuff it hits. You wanna learn? Let's put our life jackets on. This is gonna be a fun one. Okay, so we're gonna make two tools for us to take outside so we can learn about the wind a little bit. The first one that we're gonna make can tell us the direction that the wind is coming from, but not how strong it is. The other one that we're gonna make can help us measure how strong the wind is blowing, but it can't tell us where it's coming from. That's why we need both. Let's check it out. Okay, so for the first tool we are gonna make here, the supplies that we need are a pen or a pencil, some thread, we're gonna cut a piece that's just about as long as our hand, doesn't have to be too long, and then a little piece of tape to attach it. This is what it looks like when it's done. This piece of thread's a little bit long, but it'll still work. Because the thread is so light, the wind can move it very, very easily. We'll hold it up in the wind and it'll tell us which way the wind is blowing. Okay, for the second tool here, we're gonna need a couple more supplies that I'll show you, but we're also gonna want to use the scissors, so make sure we ask an adult for help if we need it. Let's check it out. Okay, for our second tool, here's all our supplies that we're gonna need. We're gonna need a little piece of cardboard, a pencil with an eraser, some scissors, remember to ask for help if you need it. Only a little bit of glue, some wall tacks, and some scotch tape. I'll show us how we're gonna make it. This is what we're gonna make. It's got four cones that catch the wind on two pieces of cardboard that are connected to the pencil eraser. And when the wind hits it, it spins around. Okay, let's, uh, let's make it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cardboard and we're gonna cut out two cross pieces. There's one, here's the other. Doesn't matter how long they are, as long as they're the exact same on both sides. So, let's do it this way. We're gonna cut one, make them the exact same length. It's okay if they're different a little bit. It's not gonna affect our results. Cool. Here's our two cross pieces. We can put them away for a minute. Next up, we're gonna make our four cones. To do that, we're gonna need four pieces of paper that are the exact same size. Here's how I do that. You can use scrap paper for this. You can use fun colored paper. I'm gonna fold one corner over to the other side And then I'm gonna cut off the extra. Gotta be real careful with the scissors. Okay, now that I've got one square piece of paper, I'm gonna fold it into smaller squares. And now I'll cut along the folds. Again, if the lines aren't quite as straight as they could be, it's okay. It's not a very scientific instrument, but it can help us get a feel for how strong the wind is and if it's blowing very strong or not very strong.
Okay, so here's our four pieces of paper. Now we're going to turn them into the little cones that we found on our tool here. The way I do it is I turn it into a little cylinder like this. I roll it up and then I make one side a little bit bigger. Cool. When it's all done, I take a little piece of tape. It's okay if it's open on the end too. Awesome. Let's make four of them now. Okay, we got our four cones. We're gonna come back to our two cross pieces here. And we're gonna tape our cones to our four cross pieces. Let's get four more pieces of tape. Okay, so the only trick here is we have to make sure they're all facing uh, the same direction when they rotate. So here's one. If the point is going that way, on this one, I'm going to make the point go the other way. That way when they spin around, they'll all be going in the same direction. Okay, so now we've got our two arms, the cross pieces, and once it starts spinning, all of them will be in the same, going in the same direction. Now we've got to connect them in the middle. I take one of my thumbtacks, be real careful here, line them up so they're right in the middle, or almost works just fine. Okay, so now they're connected, but see how they still wiggle a little bit? We're gonna undo this and put a little bit of dot, right, a little dot of glue right next to where the hole is. That's all we need. Line up the two holes, put that back through. Now we got to sit and let it dry, but when it's done, it's ready to go right inside our pencil eraser here. Good job. Okay, we got our tools all ready. Why don't we take them out for a little walk, and while we're walking around, we can measure the wind and figure out where it's coming from. Make sure you've got a handy dandy notebook to Record your results in, your wind wand with the piece of thread tied to it. Very cool. Make sure you've got this little gadget that we made. It's called an anemometer, kind of a crazy name, anemometer. Uh, make sure you've got this. 
Don't forget, super sweet sunglasses. Wear your life jacket out there. Can't be too careful. Here we go. Okay, so what do you think is good weather for sailing? And what do you think is bad weather for sailing? Certainly sun and warm is pretty nice, but it doesn't have to be. People go sailing in the winter time. They go sailing in very cold climates. They even go sailing all the way down to Antarctica sometimes. That's pretty crazy. What about wind? We do need some wind. That's what makes our sailboats go, right? So uh, we measure wind based on where it comes from, not where it goes to. That might be a little funny. So if the wind is coming from the west and going to the east, we'd say it's a westerly breeze, not an easterly. So where the wind comes from and how strong it is. Most sailors measure that in knots, like the knots in a line that we practice each day. Knots can be a little confusing and they're almost the same as miles per hour. So we'll use miles per hour when I'm talking about the wind speed here. When it comes to how much wind is fun and how much is not very fun, if it's less than five miles per hour, it ends up being almost not even enough to move our sailboat. If it gets to be more than 20, that gets to be a little too much, even for somebody who's really good at sailing. Right in the middle, between five and 15 or 20 is where it gets a lot of fun. That's about the perfect fun range for sailing. We're gonna walk to the park now, and we're gonna see if we can figure out, if we can tell where the wind is coming from and how strong it is. Along the way, let's see if we can find any tools out there in the world that tell us where the wind's coming from or how strong it is. We brought our own tools, but we can use some stuff that's on our way and see if we can tell. Let's check it out. I found a great wind indicator, flags. Like you see on this flagpole, maybe outside your school or uh, down by the water. Flagpoles are a great way to figure out which way the wind is coming from. We can see that it's coming from that away. Doesn't tell us exactly what direction that away is yet, but Ahoy there, sailors. We're walking around the park here. We've stopped at the pond to see if we can see if there's any wind and maybe tell what direction it's coming from. Let's go take a look. Okay, we're looking out at the pond. What do we see? I'm seeing a couple different things. Right up close here, there seems to be a lot of ripples, but off in the distance on the other side of the pond, there's no ripples at all. It looks pretty flat and glassy. What we're seeing is two different wind conditions. All the way far away from us, there's no wind hitting the water, so it looks just like a bathtub, very flat. Whereas up close, we see the, the wind is hitting the water and it's causing these little waves, almost like ripples. We don't know how much wind there is yet, but we do know that there is wind. Can we tell which way it's coming from? Can you see that the ripples form little lines? Looks like they're all coming from that direction. Let's see if we can find a different way to figure out where the wind's coming from. One great way to see if there's wind is to look at the trees. If the trees are moving, it usually means there's breeze. Again, we can't really tell how much, but we can tell that there is wind. Okay, let's break out our wind wands, the tool we made back at home, the pen with the thread on it. Cool, looks like it's uh, showing us some breezes here. Let's see how to use this over by the pond. Okay, we got our wind wand here. You can see the thread is pointing off to that side. If we line the thread up with my point of view, then looks like the wind's coming from about over there. It's kind of hard to see because the thread's so little, but that's why it works so well. The other tool that helps a lot when you want to know which way the wind is coming from is a compass. If you haven't used one before, it can be a little tricky, but I'll show you how to do it right now. When you open up your compass, you'll see something like this. It's got most of the directions, east, south, and west. And instead of north, it's got a colored arrow, green in this case, but yours might be red or a different color. Cool part about compasses is no matter which way you spin it, the arrow always points north. That's what compasses do best. So let's see which way we think the wind is coming from. That way, right? And we'll retilt this a little bit. We think the wind's coming from there. What does our compass say? 
almost west, right? Perfect. Okay, now that we know that the wind's coming from the west, let's see if we can figure out how strong the wind is. Remember that tool we made before we started our walk, the anemometer? Well, I've got mine. It looks like it's already spinning. Let's check out how it works. Okay, here's our anemometer. It's got two cross pieces and four little cups or cones in this case. And on one of them, I drew a star. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it spin in the wind and we're gonna count how many times that star goes past us and then we'll do a little bit of math and we'll be able to tell how fast the wind is going. What you need to do next is get out a timer. We're gonna count down from one minute and we're gonna count how many times that star passes us and then we're gonna do a little bit of math to see how fast the wind is actually blowing. So get your timers out and get ready to go. Okay, so we got our one minute timer. We're starting on the star. We're gonna count how many times it spins in one minute. On your marks, get set, go. Okay, the first time we did it, our anemometer spun around 22 times in one minute. Let me show you how we record that because we got to do it a couple more times to make sure our results are accurate. Okay, here's my handy dandy notebook. I've got the trial, which means basically which time I did it. I'm gonna do it one, two, three, four times. How many rotations each time? The first time it was 22, right? Now we're gonna do it three more times, and then we're gonna take the average. We're gonna figure out what number is about in the middle of all the numbers that we get, and that'll be our number. Remember we talked about puffs and lulls, right? Well, sometimes the wind can be a little bit higher and sometimes the wind can be a little bit lower. So doing our test just one time doesn't give us an accurate reading. We have to do it a couple times and then take the average, what's about in the middle of all the numbers that we get. So let's do that. Reset your timers for one minute for each time and count how many times the anemometer spins completely around, does one rotation, um, and that'll be our number. And then don't forget, record your results in your handy dandy notebook. Good luck. Okay, we did four trials. We wrote all our results down. Let's head back and we'll do the math and figure out how fast the wind was going. You ready? Okay, we talked about the wind direction and the wind strength. We didn't talk about how the wind changes yet. Sometimes when the wind blows, it can hit stuff and the wind can slow down or speed up and it can change directions. And when the wind slows down, decreases its speed, we call that a lull, L-U-L-L, -L, lull. And when it increases its speed temporarily, we call that a gust or a puff. Puff of wind or a lull in the breeze. If it changes direction, we call that a shift. What would cause the wind to change direction, do you think? Maybe like buildings or other sailboats. Anything that the wind hits, the wind has to go around. So whether that's a tree or another sailboat or a building. That's why sailing on lakes, the wind tends to shift around a whole lot. It makes it for real challenging conditions and you end up being a really good sailor if you can stay on top of which direction and how fast the wind is coming from because it changes so much. Out here by the ocean, the wind doesn't change so much because there's not as much to, for the wind to hit and to have it stop changing direction. So we call that a wind shadow. If, the, if there's something that stops the wind from blowing and makes it change the direction or the speed, it's called a wind shadow. On the way home, let's see if we can find any wind shadows. We'll use our anemometer to see if they actually change the speed of the wind. Let's go. Okay, I found a good example of a wind shadow like we just talked about. Here, behind this building, my anemometer's not turning at all. But if I step out from behind, it starts spinning. Pretty cool trick, huh? One more time. Woo! That's the breeze that's not hitting the side of the building anymore. Pretty cool. Okay, we're home. Good walk, everybody. It's kind of nice to get out of the house once in a while. Okay, what we'll do next, you got your handy dandy notebook with your results in it? Why don't we go sit at our desk and we'll analyze our results. We'll see how fast the wind was going. Here we go. Okay, well here's our handy dandy notebook with our results. Can you see them? Let's write them a little bit bigger. We did four trials. One, two, three, 
and four. The number of rotations of our anemometer in each trial was 22, 35, 27, and 40. Let's find the average, which means we're going to add all these numbers up. We use our calculator and we find that they equal 124. And because there's four of them, we divide it by four. And the average equals 31. That's about the middle of all these numbers. In one minute, we did about 31 rotations of our anemometer. Now the person who made our model found out that about 10 rotations in one minute equals about one mile per hour. So if we have 31 rotations per minute divided by 10, we get about 3.1 miles per hour. That's about how fast the wind was going. Well, that was pretty fun. We used our anemometer to figure out how fast the wind was going. It was about three miles per hour, pretty light. We used our other tool with the string on it, our wind wand, to figure out that the wind was coming from the west, which it does a lot in San Francisco. So what do we think? Based on what we talked about earlier, is our sailboat gonna be going all that fast in three miles per hour of wind? Not really. We'll wait for a little bit more. Come the summertime, it'll be a little bit windier. That'll be a little bit more fun. But three miles an hour is probably good to practice. As soon as we get back out there, it's gonna be so much fun. Thanks for coming this week, sailors. It was so much fun to hang out with you and build anemometers together. If you thought that was fun, make sure to check out US Sailing's other REACH videos about science and sailing topics coming up later. If you built one and you wanna show me, make sure to tag me on Instagram, Chris. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.